the editorial function at Amazon is smaller compared to all of the other job functions at mm -hmm. the company. As much pre-work as you can do to be prepared for the process is really going to help you figure out if it's the right fit. Thank you, Mikey, for your time today. Really appreciate it. Would you please tell me a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thanks for having me, Young. My name is Mikim Dang, and I'm an executive video producer at digitalphotographyview.com. It's a subsidiary company of Amazon, and I've spent my career making things, uh, many different things, mostly across digital. Um, I started my first company when I was in high school that was primarily focused on uh, skateboard design, so physical products. And then I myself really focused on filmmaking and videography for the next 10 years and worked primarily in the startup space. So I was always sort of bridging the gap between content creation, analytics, live streaming, thinking about content through the lens of platforms and distribution. Awesome. Um, so you mentioned something about DP review in, in Amazon, and obviously we work in the same company. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your you know, first reaction when you first got your phone call or basically your offer letter? Uh, like, can you tell me a little bit about like your reaction or like how you felt about it? Sure. So at the time, I actually, um, prior to joining DP Review, was at another publisher called America's Test Kitchen, which is a food media brand. And similarly to DP Review, it's a brand that has been around for quite some time, um, mostly focused in traditional media like television show, magazine, books. DP Review has primarily been a web and tech blog. So my expertise, as I mentioned, has been in creating content programs, creating original content series from the ground up. So I was really excited about the opportunity to join a brand like DP Review with the resources and support of a company like Amazon and basically, you know, build the content strategy and work with creators. And that's something that I'm really passionate yeah. about personally. So it yeah, was a very yeah. exciting moment. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your process of getting into the company? Uh, I know DP Review is the subsidiary company of Amazon, but I'm pretty sure your interview process was pretty, you know, same or similar with other, what we do with other candidates in the Amazon org. So would you please tell me about your process of getting into the company? Absolutely. And you're, you're spot on, Yang. So the process, you know, a recruiter had ori originally reached out to me about the role. We had some conversations and then I was put into what is known as the phone screen process where I had a chance to speak with our general manager, um, uh, someone in leadership who worked on the business development team that we were formerly part of. So it was a really, really seamless process in terms of the amount of conversations. I, I got to have mm -hmm. a conversation, a dialogue back and forth, really informative. And then I was moved into what's known as the on-site loop. And that was, you know, much more rigorous, much yeah. more uh, deep dive and detail than where I met you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so the interview process was um, pretty much similar to the overall Amazon interview process as well. Um, kind of shifting gears a little bit. So you mentioned something about creating content and uh, working on the DP review side. So I guess one, can you tell me a little bit about DP review for audience who might not know about, you know, what, what we do with DP review. And then second, um, tell me a little bit about what you do as a executive producer in uh, the company. Sure. Yeah. Um, so dpreview.com is essentially a tech news publication. So the sort of core product is reviews within the camera gear and ancillary space. Over the last few years, they've expanded their scope into programs like sponsored content, working with creators and influencers. So part of my job is actually managing that program and expanding the scope of that program outside of just cameras and lenses, for example, exploring into adjacent, uh, what we call GLs or verticals like PC, gaming, and video is, you know, the most per pervasive medium there is for communication, communication today. So really exciting to think about what that experience looks like with the DP review voice leading it, but also as it scales across Amazon. And then the second part of my job is supporting the editorial team mm. and building out original content to expand the scope of the brand, reach new audiences, and essentially translate that core review product into a multitude of different content across channels. Gotcha. So you work mainly with 
these digital, um, I guess, like consumer electronic products? And is it more like the video content and then like the, the written like content, what should I say? Like, are these like the two main uh, different types of content that you work closely on? Yeah, and I would say I'd lean heavily in collaboration with the editorial team when it comes to the written content. Okay. That's sort of the core content of DP Review that we then use as a foundation for all of this new content that we're building. Mm. And we're, we're right in the middle of that process. The company is going through some really exciting transitions and transformations and thinking about what does DP Review look like in an episodic video format on social, for example. Mm. So right now, our presence is primarily focused on the core site. And we're building out our new channels such as YouTube, TikTok is new for us this year, Instagram, and really thinking about the content through a completely different lens on those platforms. Gotcha. That's that's so cool. That's uh that's a really cool project that you have there. Um so I, I know that you mentioned that previous prior to coming into Amazon, you were, you know, doing a similar thing, um, similar, you know, job or similar role um, as an executive producer in the America's Test Kitchen, I think uh, it is. Um, But I'm assuming that there were a lot of learning curves when you jumped into Amazon. Um, So if you, can you tell me a little bit about your experience going through that learning curve? And um, if so, if there were any, were there any resource or like, how did you basically overcome those? Yeah, it's a great question. And I will say my experience is unique because I did have exposure. Uh, I previously worked at Facebook and Instagram. So a lot of the systems around knowledge sharing, like a wiki page, Mm. for example, where you could find resources and kind of (laughs) self-serve your onboarding process. Um, It's interesting being in a creative function within a a software company. So a lot of these things don't always fit one-to-one. So there was definitely a curve in learning um, the language, acronyms, just getting familiar with all of the different systems. And then the the leadership principles, culture, those types of things take time. And if it wasn't for, you know, colleagues like yourself who are really open and helpful, just connecting with people. I I would also say that was more of a challenge onboarding 100% remotely Mm -hmm. um, through the pandemic. So I've been at the company for about eight months now, and I, I'm now having the opportunity to meet with people in person, and it makes a big difference. So yeah, between yeah. the resources and the people, I was very well equipped to, to learn, to be supported through that learning curve. Yeah, it's, it's all about, um, you know, having, having the right person or having the right people to support you, I think, um, especially, it's especially tough to onboard during um the pandemic to work from home environment. So totally get it. Um, what do you, what do you like the most and what do you like the least uh, about your role? Wow. That's a great question. <laughs> um, you know, as I mentioned, my, my fascination and passion has always been about uh, what, what is video as a medium, video formats, video content. I've been a big believer that, you know, where your content is going is absolutely necessary to how you think about the creative process and the creative Mm -hmm. uh, inputs. So looking at the the video landscape across digital and social, video at Amazon is still very nascent in comparison to some of these other platforms. So the most exciting part for me is figuring out who is the audience, who is the customer, and then helping create these formats that are going to be valuable for them, wherever they're encountering that video across Amazon or on the DP Review site or on DP Review social channels. So thinking about that, um, helping people wrap their heads around it and then execute against those best practices, that's that's super exciting for me. I, I love learning and shaping yeah. and iterating. So that's the best part. The thing that I like or dislike <laughs> the most, um, there are definitely challenges being a, a smaller subsidiary company within a larger organization. And those are, you know, uh, I would call them logistical challenges. <laughs> you and I have worked through things yeah. like POs and budgets and processing. Yeah, so of course. it's necessary, but yeah. sometimes it can be slow. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally understand that. And um, it's part of the job, I guess. It's part of the job. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you mentioned something about, you know, people helping you out and, you know, them being a resource for you when you on board and stuff. Can you tell me a little bit about, you know, um, the company's culture and maybe a little bit about the work-life balance as well? 
Yeah. Um, you know, when you onboard, there's a system called Embark and your hiring manager plots out an onboarding journey for you and also suggests people that you should connect with, who you'll be working with frequently. They also assign you um, an onboarding buddy um, and in some cases a mentor. So those having those contacts, um, you know, right at the start was really, really essential. Um, what was the second part of your question? Work-life balance and Amazon culture and work-life yeah. balance. Yeah. So, you know, Amazon is making some pretty large efforts to, they added a leadership principle called to be earth's best employer. And I'm actually part of some working groups um, within our mm. team called the cultural ambassadors. Oh, wow. who are really trying to understand, you know, what this question means because everybody's experience and needs are different. And then they're constantly changing because we are still in fact working mm. through the pandemic. So being cognizant of our capacity, um, people's needs, people's requirements, and focusing on serving the customer and the output. I feel like there's been extremely genuine efforts to make that something that's top of mind um, mm. all the way down, you know, from leadership. I yeah. see them leading by example, which I think is really important. So the work-life balance, there's a lot of ownership that I feel like we as employees are also given to, to have those conversations and to shape what that looks like for us as long as we're communicating um, openly in both directions. Yeah. So, yeah. Of course there are periods when things get stressful and you, you know, you have to put in a little extra that, like you said, is part of the job, but it's certainly not the norm. Okay. No, um, I, I totally agree with you. And the ambassador thing is actually pretty interesting. I have not heard about it, but definitely something that I would love to learn. Um, so lastly, advice for those who want to join um, Amazon um, as an executive producer? Yeah, so I, I, I think my job function is actually pretty unique. Um, as part of my process, they actually reformatted the role because I was originally interviewing for a product manager role. Yep. And you, you know this, yeah. <laughs> you're, part, you're yeah. part of my process. Uh, you know, I think I probably, I might not be here if that conversation hadn't happened because my career track is in content. Mm -hmm. And products, um, content is arguably a product, right? But the editorial function at Amazon is smaller compared to all of the other job functions at mm -hmm. the company. So doing your research, um, you know, reaching out to people on LinkedIn, looking mm -hmm. at what other content publishers exist within the Amazon family, as much pre-work as you can do to be prepared for the process is really going to help you figure out if it's the right fit um, on, on both sides, right? Both for you yeah. as employee and as and for the company i would say as much of that pre-production <laughs> we'll call it as possible will really set you up and what's unique about being an ep at amazon is then the the pool of resources is also um it's like a tight-knit community right so i've i've been able to connect with other gotcha. executive producers across the company and that's been extremely helpful and we we have each other as a support system yeah. Well, well, I I had no idea that that was going on. Something that would never happen in let, let's say marketing or um, mm -hmm. some other role. So, yeah, that's definitely something interesting. Um, you know, Mickey, I, those are all the questions I had. Thank you so much for the time, and these were really really yeah. valuable insights. Absolutely, thanks for having me and for this project, Young. Thank you.